So when we search, and we look around, how do we, on the basis of what, do we di differentiate truth from not truth, or truth from a lie? What constitutes a lie, and what constitutes truth? Plato has this question. <laughs> it has to stand to reason or experience. Uh -huh. It has to stand to reason or experience. has to stand to reason or experience. Okay, we're getting pretty close. That's very darn close. You almost spoiled the fun. <laughs> well, okay. I guess I said it. Martin, yes. Charlie, the six in the philosophy, as you can go for a balance in life, but a life for the purpose of Christian, the same as Christian, too. Oh, you speak so fast, I you lost me. I was from Vegas. Sorry here. about that. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, um, he's the only yogi that ever translated the six systems of Indian philosophy. It's, it's six part, what? The six systems, systems of Indian systems, philosophy. Systems. Okay. At, 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 the, at the ending of his first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he kind of recommends it. But what's the principle? There's one principle that uh, that distinguishes truth from non-truth, or truth from a lie? Perception. Intention. Perception. Uh, perception is a tool. We certainly use perception. But uh, by using perception, that's one of the tools. We're, we're lacking now. We're, we're pretty close. We're very close. He was very, very close. He almost spoiled the game. <laughs> yes? Being whole with everything, every other intricate part of the system. Oh, darn. This is like... I could almost say that's it. Um, all right. How about reducing that to one word? She has uh, complete. Oh, sorry. Unity? Unity? Okay, that's very, very close. <laughs> um, all right. Who gave up? <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> this is one word. I would say intention. Uh, uh, attention, Inten intention, intention. Complete. Um, complete, yeah, we do. It's for the good. I mean, you're all right. Um, okay, so should I? It's absolute. Uh, it's absolute. absolute. Oh, that's, that's also very, very close. That you, you're pretty much using the same words to describe uh, what Tillman said. So. Uh, that's very accurate, actually. That's very accurate. I just like to summarize that in one word. So it's like a really punch, you know. Like, uh, permanent. 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 Uh, that's also oh, fact. Uh, <laughs> Another word you have in mind. Well, I, I'm leaving mine for the end. <laughs> okay. Should I? What about subjective? Subjective. Um, you never really get beyond subjective. Correct. Both yeah, because what are, our it's position is always. Yeah, that's a good point. What did you say? Well, what did you say? Oh, you said you can never get beyond, beyond subjective, subjective because you're always looking at things from your own perspective. You can't avoid that. Even when you try to look at things from other people's perspective, you're still looking from your own perspective. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's consistency. Con lie as opposed to truth is not consistent. It's inconsistent. It is inconsistent. So like, that's why once you tell a lie, you have to keep on lying. <laughs> Ever experienced this trouble? <laughs> once you tell a lie, Husband asks a wife, you know, where were you? And she says, she tells a lie. <laughs> and then the neighbor busts in and says, hey, you know, where were you? know, describes um, to him being somewhere else, uh, doing something that husband uh, shouldn't have known. <clears throat> so uh, it's consistency. Uh, so you, you guys are very, very close. As a matter of fact, you're right on it, but I just wanted to summarize it. Consistency. So even where I grew up, they say that uh, those who lie are short-legged, in the sense that you can't run away when you have short legs. You, people easily catch you. <laughs> you can't run too fast. Um, 
Uh -huh. I say thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, generally speaking. So that's what they say, that those who lie are short-legged. In other words, eventually, if you're, if you're sticking to a lie, eventually your inconsistency will, will be apparent, will become apparent. Um, and now, some people are uh, consist inconsistent on purpose, and some are inconsistent not on purpose. And <coughs> this now brings us to the... Uh, to the idea of a seeker, because uh, seeker seeks the truth. And how do you tell the truth from a lie? That the truth is consistent. So in other words, you know, we're moving about, we're going about our lives, you know, and we're acquiring information and, and experiences of this life and of our own selves and other people and environment, planet, blah, 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 everything and anything. <coughs> and then, as we go along, we, we try to figure out what is this all about. Uh, and then the conclusions that are consistent with things that we experience uh, basically purchase our faith, uh, if we're a seeker. Uh, and that's how seeker can tell the truth from a lie. And sometimes we'll hold on to a lie thinking it to be true, a truth. Uh, until later on we run into a situation or we learn something new about the world which will show, demonstrate, that that which we believed earlier is not consistent. And now at this point you have, uh, it's sort of like a crossroad, you have serious seekers and then you have those who are seekers just for the sake of fashion. Uh, the serious seeker wants to, him or her, inconsistency is, is shown, uh, that person will change itself around, will mold oneself to the newly acquired truth. Uh, whereas those who are seekers simply by fashion will not bother with it. <clears throat> and just one more last point to this brief discussion tonight. That is that uh, in order to recognize that which is consistent from that which is not consistent, one has to use intelligence. That is, <coughs> someone mentioned a reason? Was it you? I forget. It was perception. Someone. Perception. That yeah, was good. It's clear. No, it was the first. Someone yeah, answered. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I you mentioned reason? reason? Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So reason <laughs> or intelligence is, is, is crucial. Is crucial. And those who abandon <coughs> reason, those who abandon intelligence basically have no tool, have no tools to distinguish consistency from inconsistency. And they're basically just clowns. People just like to entertain mm -hmm. themselves and don't really, are not really seekers. They don't value the truth. Uh, so uh, I'll end with one quote by one of my favorite authors who passed away a few years ago. Who passed away <coughs> while meditating. <laughs> he was sitting like this, cross-legged. He had his uh, meditation beads, like I saw some beads around somewhere. Yeah. And they found him like that, just sitting, dead. <laughs> just passed away. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. He was so absorbed, you know. People weren't sure whether he was meditating or he was gone. So. Many hours later, they, they figured that he was gone. <laughs> he, he took off. <laughs> okay, so Rohini, Rohini, could you press the pause button? He took a trip and never came back. Yeah. He left the, he left the physical body behind. So, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the quote. Consciousness aspires to push beyond the limits of the imperfect knowledge of the material mind. Okay, and now, while considering how to transcend the boundaries of the mind, we depend upon the intelligence which acts like a higher authority. If a person renounces the direction of the intelligence, that person becomes deranged. And if you think about this, I think that the non-philosophical times that we're living in, where people don't value the truth, you know, where people value fashion and fads over the truth, uh, we're basically living in the world of 
quite a few deranged people. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like descending into a into a insane asylum. What, what's the word? <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh? Insane asylum. Did I say that right? Sanatorium. Now? Sanatorium. Okay, that's easier. Thank you. <laughs> Help me out with that one. <laughs> And a true seeker, when, when such a person moves around and he sees people like this, just like going, ah, yeah, you know, like, just like not caring about, you know, what's true, what isn't true, it's like, makes you feel like you're in a Disneyland or somewhere, you know, where Donald Duck becomes very real. <laughs> All right, any questions or comments from the esteemed audience? <laughs>